Hi all, today I'm going to show you how to make a spherical nav mesh in Unity. You can do this with the stock Unity and the AI navigation package available in the Unity registry. So you can see here I have this spherical nav mesh and it's essentially just six different nav meshes stitched together using nav mesh links. And so I'll show you the workflow that I came up with for generating this. So over in the hierarchy, I have a series of game objects with uh, six sides of a sphere separated into different groups. And these are um, put into these game objects that have a nav mesh surface component attached to them. And you'll notice also that the pivot point here on each side of the sphere has the Y pointing towards the direction that I want to essentially be up for that side of the sphere. So this is important just to make sure that the, uh, the AI nav mesh is baking properly and it's actually projecting from the right spot. So to generate this, you need to start with a solid piece of geometry. So the uh, sphere here I have is actually um, made up of mostly quads. As you can see here, this is a, one of the sides. And uh, I found that this geometry tends to generate a pretty nice nav mesh. Uh, you can probably uh, use other types of geometry, but the, uh, the seams will be a little bit harder to stitch up. So to create this kind of sphere, um, you can go into any 3D package, any modern 3D package, and create a box and uh, subdivide that until it becomes a sphere. And then, of course, break it into six different sides, and you should get a nice, clean uh, side like this. So going back to the nav mesh, I basically set up my nav mesh surface component here to only bake objects that are children of this group. So for collect objects, you set that to children. I believe by default it's set to all, and that's not what you want because that will just bake all of the geometry in your scene. So with that set to children, and uh, the children being each side of the sphere, you can essentially bake these uh, into their own nav mesh. And, um, and then after they've all been baked, you link them together with nav mesh links. So you can see here, I have a series of nav mesh links that have been kind of roughly, you know, stitched to the side there just to cover up that gap. I probably put way more than I actually need in here but this seems to work. So to just show you the flow here from the start, once I have my sphere in the scene and I've broken it into separate groups, all you need to do is add the nav mesh surface component. And uh, if you don't have these in your list, uh, then you just need to install the AI nav mesh um, from uh, the Unity registry. And now, uh, basically, you can just hit bake, and it should, you know, use the Y direction to bake uh, a nav mesh on your sphere. And you can select all of these, bake them all, and because they are all oriented uh, locally to uh, their different respective Y positions here. Um, they will bake on each side. So that's important. If this was not set, then it would just bake in whatever direction the Y axis is pointing. So after you have those baked, you can go into and basically make another uh, empty game object uh, and put the uh, a nav mesh link uh, component on it. And then you just need to position that nav mesh link over your gap here. 
and uh, when it gets close enough, it will uh, it will create this kind of transparent uh, transparent surface there that, to let you know that it's connecting the uh, the two nav meshes that you have it touching. So you can just edit the little gizmo here and make sure that it's creating a solid bridge between your two nav meshes. And then you can just take this nav mesh link and uh, duplicate it and try to just sort of stitch all of these edges together as best you can. So let's get that positioned and we'll go through this really quick. Definitely doesn't have to be perfect. want it to make sense. Okay. Can experiment with however many uh, off mesh links seem right for you. Um, I found that uh, if you get too complicated, it tends to confuse the AI. So sometimes just keeping it simple is the way to go. And as you can see here, I'm not doing super accurate job. You know, it's just kind of it's just kind of laying on there covering it up. So now we have our um, our off mesh links here. They're all set up uh, to bridge these two navigation uh, meshes together. And now I just need to duplicate this row for all of the, of the different seams uh, and it should all link up and work. So let's do that now. Just rotate this 90 degrees and to get them to really just activate and connect you just need to select them sometimes you need to reposition them a little bit but if you have your pivot uh, in the center of that sphere it should all line up Good. Great. All right, we have the top section here. Just going to grab all these, duplicate them, flip them upside down 180 degrees. Or a little trick of just just connecting them all by selecting them just to reactivate them and make sure that they're getting a good connection. And then once more for the sides. I'll just take this first one up here. here and duplicate that, flip that 90 degrees and that takes care of that side. Flip them 
180. And we have our full patched up spherical nav mesh ready to go. And that's the basic workflow. So you can see that it's pretty rough, um, but uh, in general, the AI should be able to find its way across all these gaps. Okay, so back to my original nav mesh. I just want to show how I set this up to use the GameKit controller AI. There's a couple extra steps to do here. So first, I want to go ahead and um, hide or disable my um, geometry that I used to do the baking. It has served its purpose. Make sure you don't disable the game objects that have the nav mesh surface on them, because that will also disable the nav mesh. So now I have this prefab uh, that you can find in GameKit Controller called Sphere to Circumnavigate, and it comes pre-configured with some gravity settings that will allow the player to walk around the sphere. So you can place this in your scene. I've gone ahead and scaled it up a little bit, added a material, but um, you need to go to the gravity trigger and under the set gravity component, you need to check use with NPC and then set circumnavigate surface state and then check circumnavigate surface state. And that will allow the AI to use the sphere just like the player does. Now I've also set up my AI here. And the only thing I need to change on the AI is uh, how it interacts with nav mesh links. So normally the default is that when uh, a GameKit controller AI approaches a nav mesh link, it will jump over it. But in this case, that's not what we want. We'd rather, rather just they walk across the sphere smoothly as if the nav mesh link was not there. So you just need to select the AI, con AI player controller, go to the AI nav mesh component, and down on the jump settings, just check off mesh link jumps enabled. Make sure that that's unchecked. So by default, I believe it's checked. Just make sure that's off and the AI will not jump when it encounters uh, a nav mesh link. Okay, so let's test this out. Okay, so I already have my zombie chasing me. And I wanted to follow me all the way around the sphere. See, there's some UI problems there. That's just something I have not addressed yet. All right. He's traveled the world with me. Now it's time for his reward. Thanks for watching.